Welcome. In this video, I want to begin talking about the Outlook Anywhere web application. And this is the companion piece to the Microsoft Outlook software that will allow you to check your email, calendar, look up contacts, or tasks from the web instead of having to be at your desktop with the full version of Outlook installed. You can get to this application in one of two ways. You can either go to the campus portal and log in and then click on the email tab at the top or you can go directly to email.fullerton.edu and go ahead and enter your campus username and password in. Either way, when you open up Outlook Anywhere, you're going to see this window here. Now, if you've used earlier versions of the web interface, you're going to notice that this looks considerably different. Many of the changes are just aesthetic, but there are some also some functional changes that we'll talk about in the course of this video. You can see the screen is basically divided up like the regular Outlook program. Over to the left, you're going to have your navigation pane that will allow you to navigate to different places inside of your Outlook web client. You're going to have a content area in the middle here. And when you're looking at email, the content area is divided into two different portions. You've got this area right here where you can see the different emails that you've received, along with a toolbar up here at the top that will allow you to do different things. And then over here to the far right, you're going to see a preview of whatever email you have selected in this content area. This content area will change depending upon what you're looking at. If you're looking at calendar, contacts, so on and so forth, a different set of um, images will obviously appear here. Now you can see I'm looking at my inbox right now, but I can very quickly use my navigation pane over here to go to different places inside of um, Outlook. For example, underneath favorites, I have a link for inbox, but I also have a link for set items right here. And if you scroll down, you'll see even more options. And this is a pretty bare bones basic um, email account. I don't have any folders created right now, but we'll see how to do that in just a little bit. So I've gone ahead and selected my inbox and you can see I just have one email right here. And again, in this content area, you're going to see this toolbar up here at the top that will allow you to do different things. Probably the most frequent thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a new email message. So if I come here and click on the new button, you're going to see that a new email message pops up. I'm going to go ahead and close that without doing anything. And you're also going to notice there's a drop down arrow to the right of that new command. Whenever you see an arrow to the right of a button, it means that clicking on the arrow will give you some additional choices. Clicking the button would just create a new basic email message. But if I click the drop down, you can see I have the choice between message and a meeting request. We'll be talking more about setting up meetings when we do the calendar portion of Outlook um, anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and click on message right now. And there I have my basic email. I can go ahead and type in a username there. And it should look up the name for you. If it doesn't, you want to check the name to make sure it works. All you have to do is click right here on this button. It looks like a person with a little check mark. And that's a check name us option. When you click that, if you're sending this email to somebody on campus, or if you're sending an email to somebody that's in your contact list, the exact email or username will be replaced with the full name of the individual. You also have the CC option here. You can put as many recipients in as you want, and you simply are going to um, separate the recipient's names with semicolons. For example, I'm going to go ahead and send this to also to Lori Arthur. So I'm going to go ahead and type in just the first few letters of her username. And I'm also going to send it to Kathleen Perkins. And again, you can see I just started their usernames. And I've separated them with semicolons. Now when I click Check Names, you're going to see that it looked up the username and placed their names in there. The subject line, I'm just going to go ahead and type test message here. And then in this area, you can obviously go ahead and add all of you, all the content that you want to your email. Many of the buttons up here at the top are going to be familiar to you from working with the regular version of Microsoft Outlook. In addition to the check names button, we also have a button to put an attachment into the message as well as to insert pictures. 
your address book can be accessed by clicking the little book icon right here and you can set the importance level of the message to either important or high importance or low importance with these two buttons right here you also have a spell check button right here which is a great new feature in Outlook um, uh, web access so I'm going to come down here into the body section of my email and I'm going to go ahead and type this is a test message and I'm actually going to misspell message there and you can see how I can click on the spell check right there and it's going to underline that misspelling for me in red if I right click on it just like if I right click on a misspelling in a regular Microsoft Office application it will give me some suggestions or allow me to ignore the warning I'm gonna go ahead and click on the correct spelling there and you'll see how it changed it I'm just gonna go ahead and type my name there and then if you're ready to send the message all you have to do is click on the send button right here if you want to save this message so that you can return to it later you just click on the save icon let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and click the save icon there and you're going to see in your status bar up here at the top it says that the draft of this message was saved at 1057 a.m. if I go ahead and close that you're going to see that I now have something inside of my drafts folder which is directly underneath your favorites if I click on drafts there's that test message I can now double click on it to open it up go in and make any changes that I want you're also going to notice that there's a toolbar here that will allow you to change the formatting of your message but be aware that if somebody has uh, their computer set up to only receive plain text messages that formatting may all get stripped out so don't spend too much time working with uh, these items um, up here well I'm ready to go ahead and send my message so I'm going to go ahead and click on the send button and when I click on the send button you're going to see that the email disappears from the drafts folder and when I click on the send items folder you're going to see there's the test message that I just sent and if I come back here to my inbox I'll see the messages that are in my inbox so much of this is going to be very familiar to you again from using the full version of Microsoft Outlook now if you want to read a message all you have to do is either read it in the preview pane right over here or double click on the message to open it on up now one key change in this version of Outlook anywhere from previous versions is the ability to group your email by conversations and you're going to see when I double clicked on that it actually exposed several messages here you're going to see that it there's the original message a response in the set items folder and another message that came in so there are actually three messages in this conversation so this is different if you're used to using an older version of Outlook where every message is independent of every other message some people like this feature some people really don't like the feature it's grouping them basically by the subject line so one thing that um, you have to be very careful of is that if two people send you different messages that just coincidentally have the same subject they may get grouped together if somebody else sent me a completely different message with the subject line test email it would probably be included in this um, list of items you can see the items that are in your conversation by simply clicking the arrow to the left of the little icon right there and you'll see how that expands it and collapses it and again if I click on any of these right here you're going to see that my preview pane over here updates itself so that I can see that item if I want to reply to this email all I have to do is click on the reply option you also have reply to all and forward here I'm gonna go ahead and click on reply and you're going to see a reply to the email has been created and I'm just gonna say this is a test reply and hit send and that email has been sent out and you're going to see I have two sent messages here in my sent items folder that have to do with that I'm going to come back into my inbox here 
and sure enough you'll see there is the test email that I just or the test reply that I just sent and again you can expand or collapse these just by clicking on that little arrow right there now this is going to be the default view for Microsoft Outlook if you don't like the conversation threads it is possible to turn those off if you go to the view menu right here and click the drop down arrow you're going to see it says group by conversations and I have a check mark next to use conversations if I click that again it will turn that feature off and you'll see now I see the two independent email messages that have come into my inbox I don't see the sent items however for that I have to go to the send items folder and there they are there now you're not stuck with that choice you can go back and forth depending on what your needs are if I click this again and click use conversations you're going to see that the view was restored to conversation view if I click the drop down arrow there I'll see all four of my items that are related to that and again, this is just a matter of personal preferences, whether you use um, conversations or not. It's also possible to adjust the reading pane over here to the right. And you'll see I have right selected here, but if I wanted to move it to the bottom, I could do that. You see there's not very much room in my window because I'm recording this right now. Or I could turn it off altogether. And now it's gone most people prefer it over to the right but you can uh, again position that however you want now if you've created any folders inside of your mailbox account on the exchange server you will see them over here under your name now again I'm just training account one here but if I scroll down you'll see all the folders that are associated with email in this area if you want to create a new folder all you have to do is right click on your name up here at the top and select create new folder and when I do that you're going to see a new folder was created there and I have that flashing cursor that's going to allow me to type a name for the folder and I'm gonna go ahead and um, name this one emails from video again you can name it whatever you want now I'm going to go into my inbox and I can simply drag that message over in here or what I can do is whoops or what I can do is I can click the move option here and if I click move to folder it's going to bring up a window that's going to allow me to select the folder that I want to move the email message into and you're going to see if I scroll down here a little bit um, Oh, I need to scroll down there it is emails from video right there and I'm gonna click move you're going to see that the message disappears from my inbox and now it appears right over here you also have a delete option and if I click the delete option I have the option to delete but I also have the option to ignore the conversation to turn it off altogether if I click delete the message disappears and it's in the deleted items folder just like it was before or just like it would have in earlier versions of Outlook Anywhere. You're going to see that when I deleted that it only deleted the items from my inbox and it broke up the conversation so I can see them individually. If I wanted to delete items from my sent items folder I would need to come here and do that as well. I'm going to come back into my deleted items folder and if you want to empty the trash all you have to do is right click right here and say empty deleted items when you do that it's going to bring you up a warning it says are you sure you want to delete the items if once you do this it can't be undone so make sure you're sure of what you're deleting and then go ahead and click yes you'll see the items disappear from there if I come back into my inbox you're going to see that it's completely empty so that's a basic overview of using the new Outlook Anywhere uh, web application for your email. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see how the calendar works in this version of um, Outlook Anywhere.